In today's macro photography tutorial, we're shooting potpourri. This stuff smells amazing, it's really nice to have around your house, but for macro photographers, it's a really great subject because it's got such a huge variety of different shapes, sizes, and textures to get to grips with using our macro lenses. I'm going to get my camera out and I'll see you in just a sec to get started. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks and welcome to a brand new year. Before we get started with today's shoot, which is potpourri, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everybody that supported us in 2019. It was a really great year for us, due in no small part to everybody watching our videos, uh, liking, commenting, uh, subscribing, and just joining in the fun. Now, we've got a lot more content to come in 2020, so if you haven't already subscribed, now would be a great time to do that so that you don't miss out on any videos coming in the next year. For now, let's talk about today's subject, which is potpourri. I've got lots of really interesting little pieces of potpourri that I want to put in front of the macro lens and see what they look like. Now, your uh, potpourri at home, if you're going to follow along, might be a little bit different to mine. Uh, that is kind of the nature of the stuff. It's all different, uh, and that's going to give us a really great variety of subjects to shoot and explore using our macro lens, using some creative coloured lighting. All of this potpourri that I've got is pretty colourless, so I'm going to be adding a little bit of colour using our light. I'm going to uh, jump in, uh, get my macro lens out, and start looking at some of this uh, potpourri. Today's setup isn't going to be too complicated or elaborate or anything too specific. We've just got um, a fairly standard camera, it's a Nikon D5600. I've got a 100mm macro lens on the front there um, and I'm just going to be popping it onto my tripod so that I've got um, both of my hands to take uh, my subjects and manipulate them in front of the lens. We're just going to be taking an initial look at our potpourri and exploring what we can actually do with it. Um, we're going to need some lighting in order to do that, so I've got the Adapter Look Studio here just on a little mini tripod, and I've got uh, a single white lighting arm that I'm just going to plug in here uh, just so that we can get a little bit of light onto our subject. So our subjects, I've got a big pot of potpourri here, all different uh, varieties of bits and bobs. So I'm just going to grab a few of them, put them in front of the lens and see if there's anything interesting uh, that we can then explore a little bit more. Firstly, I'm taking a look at this big ball of sticks of twine all tangled together. I think this is going to make some really interesting abstract shots, especially if we can introduce some colour. I'm going to pop this down in front of my camera and take a look at what this looks like just using a single white light. Now, it's not particularly interesting at this point, but I think if we start moving our lighting around, uh, adding some diffusion and some colours, uh, this could be really interesting. So I'm going to put that to the side and we'll experiment with it in just a second. Next up, I've got a big curly piece of wood which has a big curl in the middle and then some interesting ridges on the outside. Let's pop this down in front of the camera and see what it looks like up close. Now we do need to focus in a little bit there, but you can see that those ridges are really interesting. If I move my lighting around a little bit and compensate for the brightness, uh, you can see that we're going to get some really interesting shadows coming off this ridge. Uh, and probably the same for the little curl in the middle. I bet we can do some really uh, cool um, effects using some colours, uh, maybe some diffused light in the background there, uh, but it's definitely worth experimenting. So I'm going to put that one to the side as well and pick another piece of potpourri out of my pot. This one looks like some sort of uh, dried plant, uh, potentially a seed pod of some sort at some point. If you uh, recognise what this is, um, definitely let me know down in the comments um, because it's one of the more interesting ones at, uh, at first glance. Um, as I place this down on the table here, I can see that we've got quite an interesting texture on the front of those 
Um, let's call them dried leaves for now. They do look quite similar to the dried leaves video that we uh, that we shot. Um, and I'm wondering if we shine some light through uh, the actual leaves themselves, whether they'll behave in the same way that they did in that previous video. And yeah, it looks like we're gonna get some really interesting effects as we shine light through uh, this thin uh, organic material. I'm definitely putting that one to the side so that we can try out some colors and interesting effects later on. Next up, we have this nut, which seems to have been painted white, probably for decorative purposes, uh, but let's put it in front of the camera and see if the textures on this surface are something worth investigating further. Now, that does look pretty cool, um, but I think with some lighting coming in from the side, it would probably look even cooler. Coming in from the back there, it looks almost like a planet or a moon. It reminds me of the shots that we were taking of marbles creating solar systems uh, by using a single white light and shining onto uh, different types of marbles. Now, because we've already done that, I'll link that video up there if you want to go and check out some shots of uh, small round pieces like this. Um, I'm not going to uh, spend too much time shooting this one today. Uh, let's move on to another piece of potpourri. Next up we have these little pieces of wood uh, which have a bark on one side and then on the inside it's quite a soft wood with lots of fibres and lots of texture on the side. Let's pop it down in front of our camera and see what we can see. Now that's looking pretty cool uh, just from the outset. Picking up on those fibres is going to be really interesting, um, but I noticed that there's a little bit of texture on this front edge as well, so uh, it might be quite cool to um, shine lights in from the side and pick up on all of this texture and detail on the edge of the piece of wood. I'm sure that some of you at this point in the video are already thinking, just get on with it, take some pictures, show us the results. But I wanted to uh, make a point of showing you this little process because I think it's pretty important, especially for new photographers, uh, people that are new to macro photography in particular, and anybody that's starting out shooting a new subject for the first time. Simply putting uh, some subjects in front of the camera, even for just a few seconds with some basic lighting can really give you some inspiration, some ideas about what you'd like to focus on. I don't think there's much point in wasting time on something that's never going to look really good. Um, so you want to uh, find your ideas uh, really quickly, focus down on something that you want to achieve. Now I found these subjects to be really interesting, so I'm going to try a lot of different things, um, but I might find that one of those things captures my interest more than the others and I'll focus down on that. If you guys just want to experiment, then by all means just keep putting things in front of the camera and keep experimenting. For now I am actually going to take some pictures and I'll try and show you exactly what I did for each one of them and my thought process behind them. So firstly I've been playing around with this little ball of sticks. Now something that I noticed in those initial shots was that that white light was kind of harsh and that I want to get some difference between uh, the foreground, the sticks on the front of the ball, and the background, the sticks on the back of the ball. So what I've done is introduce some colour. I've got uh, a red colour filter on my white lighting arm and then I've plugged in a blue lighting arm with uh, uh, just a diffuser on the front of there to give us some blue colour. Now this together uh, doesn't do very much until you start placing these in different positions on your ball of, uh, of sticks. So I'll just hit record here and show you some of the difference that this makes as you move the light around your, uh, your subject, you can create a lot of different effects. With something like this, you can also change your focus. So focusing in on the front sticks is one thing, but you can then go and focus in on the back sticks. You can go and move your subject around uh, to find interesting compositions. This is a pretty tricky subject to get your composition to be uh, not too abstract, uh, not too conventional, um, but just in the middle there where you've got something eye-catching. 
I'm going to keep playing around with this a little bit more, uh, change my colors around maybe, and definitely uh, play around with uh, the light a lot more on uh, the background of the sticks, see if I can't get some really interesting effects going on. I'm finding that this stuff, because it's so colourless, uh, we've got some really great opportunities to play around with different colours, and especially with the ones that have a lot of relief on the surface, a lot of texture, um, it's great to play around with shadows as well. Right now I'm taking a look at uh, this curled piece of wood, but I'm not taking a look at the curl, I'm taking a look at this texture that we have on the back. It's quite, uh, it's quite a rough texture and it's also a pattern. So I think that's going to uh, create some really interesting images if we can get our lighting right. I'm just going to place this roughly in focus here and you can see that because my white light is coming from the side as opposed to the front, it's creating these really deep shadows along those ridges. Uh, that in itself is really interesting, but what happens if we start to add some colour as well? Because we've got no light in those recesses, uh, we can play around with adding a little bit of colour. I've got a green lighting arm plugged in here, and as I bring it in just very slowly with a diffuser, we can get a little bit of green into those shadowy areas and almost bring this uh, dead, dry piece of wood back to life. It's going to give it a little bit of uh, green again, um, giving it a bit of an organic feel. You could even uh, sort of make it look a little bit like dragon scales or something quite surreal like that. Changing the colour filters around also gives it a really cool effect, but I want to flip this piece over now and try and uh, investigate the inside of this little curl. I think we can get some really uh, smooth lighting effects in this background while getting a nice sharp image of the little flick at the front. So having flipped over my little um, my little piece of wood, I found that it actually looks kind of a little bit like a shell. So I really wanted to uh, exaggerate that curve uh, with a little bit of lighting, again trying to separate out the foreground from the background. So what I've done is I've actually moved my uh, studio underneath my glass coffee table. I've brought one lighting arm up and around over the top, and that's a red lighting arm with a white diffuser on the end. And then I've brought a green lighting arm underneath the table, shining up through the glass. Now, this is giving me a really unique look on my, uh, on my piece of wood, uh, making it almost seem like it's glowing from the inside. I want to take this, uh, go a little bit further and see if I can't get some uh, blues and greens in there as well to emphasize that sort of seashell, underwatery look in almost uh, a fantasy type way. My next subject out of the pot of potpourri are these little pieces of wood. On one side we've got some uh, some bark, on the other side it's got a nice texture with um, some fibres coming off the sides and then a texture on the, on the edge of the wood as well. All of this put together creates a really, really uh, varied subject just in this one little piece of wood. We can take a look at the fibres, we can take a look at the end and we can take a look at the bark. Now choosing where to uh, focus is going to be up to you, it's going to be up to your specific subject. I've got um, a little piece here with uh, a bit of um, a fissure on the end and when I introduced some uh, red light and some orange light it almost looked volcanic, like dropping off the edge of a crevasse down into a lava lake or something like that. Using your imagination is clearly uh, a big part of of finding some interesting shots in subjects like this. I'm going to keep experimenting with these and see if I can't come out with some even more interesting images. On to the final subject of uh, this potpourri shoot then, and what I think is the most interesting as well. The little seed pod slash uh, dried out flower, whatever it is, it's really, really interesting when you get some bright white lights shining behind the subject. 
What I've done here is put the little seed pod into a clamp so that I can stand it upright. I've got my camera nice and level with the front of those leaves so that I can get them all in focus. And then I've brought two lighting arm S's, which are our brighter version of a normal white lighting arm. I brought them in from the back, shining on the back side of two, um, two of the leaves of the petals that are, are pointing outwards almost like this. What that's doing is actually allowing us to see through those petals, bringing out all of the detail as the light shines through. It's definitely worth checking out whether any of your subjects are slightly translucent because shining a bright light through them can create some really interesting effects. If you want to see some more images uh, and the full process of going through uh, getting shots like this, definitely go and check out our dried leaves video and even our normal leaves video because we spend a lot of time shining lights through leaves there uh, to pick up on all of the missing detail that's hidden when you're not shining a light straight through your subject. Once again, we found an amazing macro photography subject in a pretty common household item. Potpourri is a really cool subject that you guys can shoot at home uh, with very little effort. All you need is some thought behind your composition and your lighting, and you're gonna get some really cool images. And I think I've said the words cool and interesting about a thousand times during this video because that's exactly what it is. When you get up close using your macro lens, seeing that detail that you can't see with the naked eye, certainly my eyes which aren't very good, then you're very quickly reminded how uh, popular macro photography is uh, simply for that ability to see the unseen. If you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, do leave a like down below and leave a comment to let me know how you get on shooting your own potpourri. Also, don't forget to subscribe for all of those new videos coming in 2020. For now though guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.